<laughs> David Fraser, how are you? Hey, I'm doing really, really well and so glad to be with you today, Tim. Thank you so much for taking the time. Look, let's just jump right to it. You have the number one gospel billboard charting song in the country with release ricky dillard tell us all about it tell us how you feel congratulations a round of applause like <laughs> how do you feel it's, it's a it's a very uh surreal uh feeling i've done a lot of music over the years and um i honestly i didn't think it was going to make it to number one i i, I thought it would just kind of stall at maybe two or three but yeah um i kept getting inboxes it's going to number one it's going to number one so when it finally went there um it's just a it's just an incredible feeling i think uh probably more than the feeling of having it be number one from a chart perspective a lot of uh, a lot of my inboxes and and messages about the song and how it helped people how it ministers to people how it encourages people that 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 always you know kind of trumps what the chart says exactly exactly right it's like wow i did not know my work would just have this type of effect on people mm -hmm. that has to feel yeah. incredible yeah yeah it's, it's it's definitely like i said it's it's one of those kind of things that you know sometimes you creators often uh i think i think you somewhat feel a little bit inadequate with your creations or you feel that it's, it's not this it's not that you know mm -hmm. but uh it's, it's always encouraging to get uh, uh something like this to happen amazing amazing so for those who don't know who you are <laughs> okay because you are <laughs> your penmanship is crazy why don't you just run down to us your biggest songs that we would most likely you know people would be more familiar with that uh that just you know impacted us on the gospel side well well most people uh i guess uh most people would would recognize the song i need you to survive um i need you to survive was uh it's now about maybe 12 or 13 years old but uh, uh -huh. Hezekiah it Walker. has been yeah, had Bishop Hezekiah Walker, Love Fellowship Choir. I've done 27 songs for him over 11 albums, 12 albums. And uh, I mean, a lot of churches, the, Bishop Hezekiah Walker's music was, was Sunday morning friendly music for choirs. And yeah. so a lot of choirs sang, you know, how much we can bear. And they sang Power Belongs to God. But uh, I Need You to Survive <clears throat> ended up kind of being more of an anthemish kind of song. Yeah. And uh, it it is now in uh, three hymn books. It's been it's uh, been done by the London Symphony Orchestra, the Boston Pops. It's Oprah Winfrey sang it on one of oh, her man. shows. Um, yeah. uh, Republican National Convention, Democratic National Convention. It's in three hymn books now, and uh, I just did uh, a license for uh, one of the popular hymn book companies to just put out a version of "I Need to Survive" that's yeah. in to their audience um, at GIA yeah. public publications. And, shout out uh, to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out to them. And um, we, we're talking about maybe, you know, in the upwards of 20 to 30 million views on YouTube and, yeah. uh, um, you know, a lot of sales. And, and, you know, that's probably the biggest, biggest one, but, uh, uh, I've I've been blessed to do Karen Clark Shear, Yolanda Adams, T. Jakes, uh, Jonathan Nelson, James Hall, Colorado Mass Choir, uh, Bruce Parham, uh, just a lot of a lot of go go go, go 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 Shirley, <laughs> Shirley Caesar Shirley yeah. Caesar <laughs> yes then, yeah amazing amazing well you know your list is long <laughs> so tell us I've been about working hard. Yes, I see. I see. We we can tell. Like it shows. Like, tell us the background. Like, how did you get into, you know, writing songs? Was this something that you started doing since you were younger? Did you just kind of fall into it just by being in church? Because that kind of that usually happens too when people are just in church and they're a part of the choir and they just start coming up with songs. Or, you know, were you an artist first? Like, tell the background of how this all you know transpired. Well, uh, I grew up in church, of course. Um, I started out singing in the choir, then uh, wanted to play the drums, and then playing the piano, then playing the organ, then becoming a very young 
minister of music of a church. And the minister of music that was before me, um, he was a great songwriter as well. His name is Michael Rogers. And we used to have a choir called the Bible Way Radio Choir, which was signed to Savoy Gospel years ago when Savoy was actually a record company. And they did about five albums. Nice. And uh, he went on to pastor another church. And I wanted to write songs like him. And so started out with simple things and then wrote, ended up writing my church's radio broadcast theme. And uh, when we had Christmas plays or Easter plays, I would write the music for those. And, and one of the members of my church at that time was Hezekiah Walker. And he came to me one day and said, hey, David, I'm getting ready to leave the church, but I'm, I'm starting a community choir and uh, we're going to start recording an album. Could you write some songs for us? So that's how the early Hezekiah Walker music uh, kind of got going and started. And then from the popularity of that music, other artists start reaching out to me directly. Hey, could you do, me, do a song for me? Could you do a song for me? And so on and so forth. So, you know, some 80 to 100 songs later, and, you know, of course, some of the records um, got a lot of notoriety and Grammys and Stellars and stuff like that. And yeah. so that's basically how I started. I started locally. And because of the impact I had locally, I think I was able to um, start getting some international attention. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us, take us into your, your creative process. Like, what does that look like? Are you, <clears throat> are you usually like, you know, starting with the chords at the piano, you know, do you find inspiration from maybe things you've gone through? Like, what does that process look like? Let's say, for instance, with release. Let's talk about release since it is the number one song in the country. <laughs> How did that song come about? Well, my process is, is, is probably a little different from um, other people's processes. Process. I know a lot of songwriters that are experiential writers. I'm, I'm more so, I, I think gospel music for me has has always been my i've always tried to search for subject matter that was obscure okay the more obscure the subject matter the more uh what i call song life is added to your creation so i don't think there was before i did a song called release there was a song called release so automatically one that's a great topic to discuss right. now how do i make it musical how do I make it melodic? How do I engage people? Uh, how simple is the thought? How, uh, how sensible is the thought? How, how does it relate to the, the believer or you know, you know, who I'm writing for? How does it, how does it relate to the listener? Uh, um, uh, does it have a spiritual component, which means does it have something that will take people from Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday, uh, when they're down, will it lift them? When they're discouraged, will it give them encouragement? All those kinds of things. But I, I think first and foremost, I always try to find subjects, talk about things that haven't been talked about, say things that haven't been said. And uh, I've, I've really tried to aim at that with stuff like We Made It or Power Belongs to God, where there, were, there wasn't a song called Power Belongs to God before then. Second Chance, you know, how much we can bear. Although there were, there's a hymn, how much we can bear, but I kind of put a little twist on it. So I always try to look for things, favor. I always try to look for things uh, that haven't been said, haven't been talked about. So Release uh, was a part of about four or five songs that I had wrote from my a church choir record here in Macon, Georgia. Uh, yeah. um, and uh, uh, some of the musicians that were a part of that record worked for Ricky Dillard. Okay. Um, so when I finished my record, they were like, Ricky, you, know, you need to take these song some of these songs and do them on your record. So, yeah. of course, Ricky reached out to me and was like, hey, I want to record three songs off your album. I was like, ah, I don't know about three. Maybe, <laughs> let's maybe do two or one. So we kind of settled... And, and, and release was just one of those things. We, we're in a time and a, uh, uh, music is also very timely. Yes. If, you know, even if you have a great message, if it's the wrong time, it can't go do what it's supposed to do. So release, um, I, I was talking through the lyrics with somebody, you know, uh, um, there's a blessing, there's a healing, there's a breakthrough. It's here. Are you ready? Get ready. It's already been released in his presence. And this is where it kind of shifts. And I think where people connect, because I think a lot of times we start talking about 
release people think material things right but i kind of shift it and say in his presence there's joy, there's joy. Uh, every, every desire only believe by his spirit there's peace yes. and then thanks be unto god ultimately who's going to give you all the things that you need the yes. heavens are open uh his spirit is flowing whatever you need it's already been released so it kind of focuses on more of a need than desire base but mm -hmm. more of things that god wants us to have than what we just think we should have right so right. and again and it's very timely for for the moment and uh, um and i think great songs and great messages live a lot longer than great writers so I always try to build um, a song that will live past me. Yes. Um, live right. even live past the moment. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's like my thought process. I always want to try to say something that hasn't been said. And then as far as working through the melody and the music and the arrangements, I, I play um, um, piano. I play keyboards. <clears throat> so I've never had to really go outside to get musical arrangements which has mm -hmm. been a great blessing so, so you're composing their, your own arrangements and yeah, right yeah yeah so when you hear a song that says written by dave frazier it's, it's written from the music end and mm -hmm. from the arrangement side now for for writers that are listening that may not play or may not arrange that well you know it's always a good to connect with somebody who you have a synergy with that you have a, a good a good relationship with that you can kind of work through the percentages with without a whole bunch of fuss and stuff like that and right. be able to come out with the product right at the end of the day so that's awesome awesome thank you so much those are a lot of gems that i know you know <laughs> songwriters can really take notes in and and you know apply to to their career as well so um you know my platform really speaks to the music creator um, mm -hmm. about, you know, not only being creative, but really protecting their rights. Um, and also, you know, just staying on top of, you know, their ownership and splits and all that kind of stuff. So how has, how has your experience been? I know you said that you usually compose and write a lot, but had you ever dealt with any issues dealing with split percentages and negotiation? <laughs> and, you know, just how do you navigate through that process when it, when it comes up? Well, I, I, I kind of, now I don't really have to do too much negotiating with record companies. Um, I think most of the gospel record companies are very familiar with my work. Yes. So when when the questions are asked, would you like to give percentages to the artist, or would you like to give the record company percentage? I could say, well, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. And uh, not and at this point in my career, yeah, I don't have. Yeah, to. Not, not at this point. And if I do, then you know, what is the what is what kind of advances can we do? You know, and I can and I can be flexible with that. So, but I I tell young writers. Um, writers that are just getting started, that are getting placements. You have to be flexible in the beginning. You don't always have to be flexible forever. Right. Sometimes you got to give up a little bit yeah. to get in the door. door and once you get in the door, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you get in the door and you, and you get some good placements, you get some hits under your belt, yeah, you can stand up and big man and say, hey, you know, I need this, I need that, I need the other. Right. But you know, in the in the process of getting to, um, I, a, a wise man once told me, fifty percent of something is better than one hundred percent of nothing. Okay. So so <laughs> <it again>. so, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I mean, if you if you you know, and I have to really go back to. It's. I'm so happy to be connected to uh, Tammy and the Metso Agency <laughs> because you. we can, we can go back. And kind of look at some things and see how we can get more of our fifty percent back. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know. You know. And I say to any writer that's out there, uh, your relationships will often determine uh, uh, your revenue. Mm -hmm. Your relationship. You know who you who you're connected with determines sometimes how far you go. Your uh, relationships uh, the, determine your revenue. That is a gem. Yeah, I better write that down. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean. I mean. Uh, I, we we both uh, have a great friend uh, in James Walker, yes. um, attorney James Walker, Shout out to and, James and, Walker. Uh, and we have a, a relationship that 
Um, he understands what I need mm -hmm. and what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I understand what he needs to do. He, and, he, and he does what he does and I do what I do and we can be successful together. Right. And I think, I think connecting with good people, if you're, if you're really concerned about your legal side, connect with a good attorney. If you're really good, if you're really concerned about splits and things, have some good conversations with some people. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, getting in the door is different from being in the door. Right. You know, wanting a t-shirt and having the t-shirt is two different things. Yes. So, so Word. I can say when I, when the, when I get the calls, I don't really have to discuss a lot about the percentage part more so than I, more so than I discuss the creative side. Right. <laughs> so, right. and, and that's the thing that I, you know, kind of, kind of focus on now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we know you have a decorated, uh, resume repertoire catalog and uh you know it's completely inspiring and uh you know i i know for sure that you know it is um on on the gospel side especially it really gives you know hope to a lot of songwriters to know that you've been doing it this long and you're still you know i'm talking about getting to yeah, it it's, you know? it's, it's, thir it's 30 years now 30 so years 30 years so Wow. You know, um, I, I think my first uh, placement on a major label was, was in my early 20s. Okay. And okay. then from there, just kind of, you know, and I pretty much placed music with just about every gospel label uh, after the mergers and all those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, now they're all, it's, it's, you got your big three now. So it's, it's yeah, everybody yeah. in one big pot. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And, so, so and what else? I, and, and then I have like my own series of music, the Psalms yeah. and the spiritual stuff, which has really been uh, really great because I've been able to take music from that, create song books mm -hmm. and sell those all over the world. Awesome. Because, because overseas, uh, they want music, but they really want sh sh charts. Composition. Yeah. yeah, they want the, yeah. And uh, um, I, ha I had the pleasure of going to Sweden and Germany in 2017. Cool. And every book, every book I had gone, every CD I had gone, and I didn't go there doing anyone else's music. They wanted me to come do and do my music and share. And, and I, I mean, we had 1,400 in the choir in Stockholm, uh, another 1,000 in Yabla, another 2,000 in Gothenburg, uh, um, all these great cities in the Netherlands and, and Poland. Then we came down to Germany, went to Cologne and to Bad Kreuzna and, and all these little cities in Germany. And, and yeah. uh, it was just incredible. And I'm looking to go to Africa uh, 2021 yeah. awesome. because that's a whole nother market. And I'm, I'm working on new music too. I have a great song that I'm hoping to- I was just about to ask you, so what else do you got coming up? <laughs> I, got, I got new music. Well, well, let me explain. Let me go back to release a little bit. Release came uh -huh. from my church, uh, project which is called uh, Pastor Carlos Kelly presents BBC worship 2018 so okay. what I'm what what I'm going to do is I'm going to release another single from BBC worship called I still believe with a video okay so it'll be a video and a single so that's coming in the next two weeks or so okay. and so that's that's the first thing and I'm hoping that people I can connect people from release back to where release actually came from and 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 exploit um, the the next song I still believe which I wrote and right. arranged as well too. Right. So that's number one. Number two it. is I'm doing a great great international mm -hmm. kind of island flavor African flavor worship song called um, Oh Lord Mighty Wonder. Okay. Mighty Wonder. Mm -hmm. Mighty Wonder. And I'm and I have a great uh, lady from Jamaica who's going to sing it with me. And her name is Roxanne Tracia. Roxanne Tracia. So okay. it's going to be called Mighty Wonder, David Frazier featuring Roxanne Tracia. Yeah. And it's okay. an international up tempo. I mean, you know, it, soca, it, it's going to give you that. It, All of it. It's going yeah. it, to give people that thing. Very easy to sing <clears throat> Sunday morning, but but international and we're hoping to really have a big impact in Africa yes. and then there's a video be, there'll be another video connected yep. with that as well mm -hmm. so 
uh, of course, now everything has to have that video element to tap into that streaming revenue Absolutely. that Absolutely. YouTube and Spotify and the other um, companies allow. So I still believe, which is uh, um, the BBC worship, that's going to have a video connected to it. And uh, of course, uh, Mighty Wonder will have an incredible with dancers, and, and it's just going to be rich high energy, yes. high energy yes. jumping. And, and, and it's uh, such an opportune time because that's what the world needs right now. You know, with all that's mm -hmm. going on, like you are so on it with just making sure, like you were talking about timing earlier, um, that is that's that's exactly what we need positive energy, uplifting music, inspiration, you know, just really shifting the energy from what it has been, you know, with everything going on in politics and a pandemic and, you know, just unemployment and just everything else that has come from it. So many have, you know, so many people have lost their lives and people have lost family and loved ones. And so I'm just like all for it. I'm like, yes, that is the right direction. We all should be going as writers is really focusing on creating positive, uplifting, you know, impactful music because I mean, the world needs it. So Man, I'm and, so excited for and, you. And, and believe it or not, that is the music that lives the longest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm a big advocate for something I call song life. Okay. And uh, um, like I said, I need, I need to Survive, written in 2002, 18 years later, 17 years later, it is still as powerful as it was back then. Even some of the other things that I've tried to bring to the table, and I tell any writer, any creator um, um, to search for things that, that have song life that people can revisit over and over and over and over again. Because if you got people revisiting, it, it that's where the impact is, and uh, and uh, that's that's we that's what I believe cr the creative side comes from. That creative gift comes to make an impact, not just for where we are right now, for people that are coming behind us and the future okay. and going forward. Yes, I agree 100%. Thank you so much for just sharing, you know, your side of, you know, song creation with us, you know. Um, I think it's important for the legends to be able to pour back into our creative Oh, community. I owe you $5 for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and, and thank you, Tammy, and thank you to the Metso Agency for doing so much um, to to help me to keep going. Yes. Keep writing. Okay. Yeah, keep, keep the catalog and, organized uh, and everything. And, and like, it's yeah. an honor for us. It definitely is an honor for us to represent and, the catalog. Uh, we got big things. We're gonna we're gonna keep trying to do it big. We're gonna keep aiming for the charts and so keep trying to have an impact do. and uh, hope everybody watching that uh, is in need for um, ready to take the next step and ready to move forward. Um, definitely reach out to James Walker. Definitely reach out to Tammy uh, at the Metro Agency, and reach out to me if I can help yes. you. I will. I was point about to say, you. shout out to your social media. How can people find? <laughs> How can they follow you and get tapped in? Yeah, well, I was going to say, Tammy, I've been getting so many emails from songwriters. <laughs> hey, could you help me with my song? Could you help me with my song? <laughs> so, yeah, and I've tried to help as many people as I can, yeah. um, and listen to as much music as I can, and, and I still will um, yeah. um, do that. But I am on. Uh, all social media uh, on Facebook at David Frazier and David Frazier, two capital I's or David Frazier the second. I also have a music page, David Frazier Music on Facebook page, okay. on Facebook as well. So people can see catalog, they can see what's going on with me from a music perspective. Mm -hmm. um, on uh, Instagram, uh, David Frazier one. Right. And on Twitter, Dave's Lyric. Okay. On Twitter at Dave's Lyric. And no, I have a website. It's DavidFraser.net. Uh, DavidFraser.net. Yeah, yeah. You can see, you know, what I've done, what I'm doing, and what I will be doing. And we try to keep that up to date as well, too. Well, thank you again so much. Uh, I'm just, I can't wait to get this up because I'm, I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and like export this and get this up so everybody can see it. It's been an awesome, incredible time uh, talking with you about, you know, your your Billboard ch chart type number one single ooh, ooh, release. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> so if you guys have not tuned in and, uh, you know, pulled up release by Ricky Dillard, make sure you go to YouTube or your streaming platforms, listen to the song, be inspired. And, you know, know that that just comes from a fruitful place. Um, David has been 
just impacting the world of gospel music and just, you know, the world period in general, people who just love inspirational music. He's been doing it for 30 years now. So, I mean, what a resume, take notes, dive in, learn, study his music, listen to everything that he has written, check out his catalog at davidfraser.net. Mm-hmm. And um, man, just get inspired. Do you have any last words for any songwriters and producers? Um, I want to I want to tell you something that a friend of mine told me some years ago, and uh, uh, he said to me, uh, uh, "David, you will never be without the things that you need if you continue to do the things that you've been graced to do." Amen. He said he said to me that creators create. So if you are a creator, keep creating, creating. And, and keep creating until you create something that will create itself. Oof, yes. Chops Mike. <laughs> that was creators, creators create. He, he, and he was really saying to me, don't worry about percentages and lawyers and different those things. Just create. Just create. Just focus if on you, creativity. If you create, what you create will then begin to create. I love that. I love that. Well, all right, y'all. Y'all got a lot. Rewind this video. <laughs> Take notes, okay? Because there was a lot of gems that were dropped today, okay? Thank you. And keep David. creating, Tammy. Keep creating, Tammy. I want to hear I some am. music. Keep I am. I am still creating. It's just a balance. <laughs> it's like being a CEO now, running an admin company, and just, you know, everything else I told you I got going on, it's like, I'm trying to balance it all, but definitely it's creativity is, it's fun now to, to me. Yeah, it it's definitely is fun. Yeah. For so sure, it'll I will be, do. It'll be, it'll be life for you. It'll be peace for you. Yeah. Create, create. It's fun I see now, them plaques, I don't have I the see pressure. them plaques behind you, girl. Create, <laughs> create, girl. Create. I promise I've been creating. It's just, you know, I'm not putting it out like, yeah, I just wrote a song today, you know, but I got some stuff. I got, <laughs> I got some stuff. Like we, we working over here, you know what I'm saying? It's just, like I said, it's all about balance, you know, and I definitely, you know, I still have to service my clients. So that's the main thing is just making sure y'all's catalogs are straight. You know, we're doing our meetings every week and, you know, trying to stay on top of that as well. So, and I, and I'm very passionate about that. You know, this has been my platform for a minute, just really empowering songwriters and producers. So, you know, I still have my obligation there. And, uh, you know, it's just a balancing act every single day. I understand. I understand. Yes, sir. All right, now. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I love you so much. Thank All right. You. Love you, too. Take care. Bye-bye.